Hi Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your August 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you want to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just click the bell notification. Now before we dive into this reading, and we talk about the moon that I have set up here for you guys, let's clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity that we have inside us. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body like storm clouds. Centering yourself. Letting peace flow over you. Grounding you. <sighs> all right. Let's see what the tarot has to say. How will Aquarius be affected by the August 2020 full moon? How will Aquarius be affected by the August 2020 full moon? How will Aquarius be affected by the August 2020 full moon? And I have to say, this is going to be a powerful moon for you because the full moon is in Aquarius, so it is really going to call to you body, mind, and spirit. How will Aquarius be affected by the August 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Yeah. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. All right. You have two bonus cards. Just move back my camera so you can see everything a little bit more clearly. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to start with your bonus cards. They are the seven of wands and then the six of wands. So I love this progression here. The six going right into the seven. That is, that is wonderful. So we have that there for you guys. Or the countdown, the seven going into the six, however you want to see it. We have the three of cups. The Nine of Cups, the Three of Wands, and the Four of Swords. The repeat of the number three. Oh, and the left-hand side, this is your personal self. The middle is your heart, and the right is your public self. And this is how the moon will affect you in each arena. The repeat of the number three shows that divinity is really on your side during this time, guiding you, helping you move forward, embracing, yeah, embracing your greatness. Another three. So you, now you have three threes. This is a divine repetition. And so there is power here in you. And you will be seeing this. You will be seeing it really quite profoundly. And you have the Page of Swords, which calls to you. As an Aquarius, it calls to the full moon in Aquarius. So that's astoundingly strong. Emperor, you're a student. You become a ruler and then a magician. That is awesome. Six of Swords. Five of Pentacles. Sun. Queen of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. Strong link to the next full moon, which is on the 2nd of September, which is the Pisces full moon. So that is going to be very powerful for you. 
both of these moons very powerful. The new moon is on the 18th of August, and this is, and this new moon is in Leo. All right. So you do have with the bonus card here a repeat of the number six. So that is a caring, nurturing, beautiful number coming in to to aid you to to make you feel connected is what I'm seeing here. Now, the before we dive into these cards, which are really, really lovely for you, all right, the personal, this moon is going to be intense on you personally, and it's not speaking negativity over you. It's just saying, you know, forewarned is forearmed because there are hardships that you have been through. You, you need to rest from this, you know, war of life, you know, the quote unquote war. And so here, it's just like, because life beats us down. It, it, it brings us fantastic, joyful moments, and it also brings us overwhelming tears. And so here, you know, it is knowing that each one, each stage of life leaves its mark, brings, brings a scar with it, whether it be, you know, a scar of sorrow and pain, or whether it be one of joy and happiness, they leave their marks on us, you know, on our, on our souls, on ourselves. And the full moon in Aquarius, which sings to you so beautifully, right? This says, show the world the real you. And this is you, you know, breaking free, showing the world the real you. But this is also a bit of a hesitation because you've been burnt in the past, most definitely. So this is the rebel moon. You know, you're going to want to kind of go against the grain just to go against the grain. That's just going to be the thing here that really kind of sings to your soul. It's kind of like, I, I need change. And you're going to long for change. You're going to make change happen in your life. This is breaking out of ruts. This is being true to yourself. This is trying something different, something fun, something, you know, maybe even a bit out of your comfort zone, Aquarius. And this is time, this is a time for you to be the unique individual that you are. And this is amplified by the fact that Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, which brings in personal freedom and individualism. And those things become very, very important to you. Aquarius, you are also linked to the Celtic goddess Bridget, which is, which in Celtic mythology is the goddess of poetry, of storytelling, of music, of the arts. So those are also going to be very important things for you during this time to have creativity be around you. But this is also a moon that wants you to kind of take your schedule and throw it out the window. You know, just kind of go with the flow of things, which isn't a bad thing. I can actually see that being rather good for you. But you are also going to want a bit of, stru of structure to keep on point to what needs to be accomplished during this time because you can be caught up. You can be caught up in, in rebelling against, against norms, against what, yeah, just rebellion. It's just a sense of, I mean, you have the most beautiful heart, this way of opening your, your being up to people, all right? And the thing with this moon is it calls you to causes, right? And you cannot forget that one of the main causes in your life is yourself because you will give your time, your energy, your efforts, your everything to everyone else, especially during this moon. I mean, the, the, the weak, the wounded, they are going to speak to you. And they speak to you anyway, Aquarius. This is part of your life mission with people, with animals, with plants, you know, every being speaks to your soul. And this is a time that it can become a bit overwhelming. And so do not forget, do not forget to fight for yourself. Do not forget to stay true to your traditions because this is also a time where you're going to want to kind of throw traditions out of, out of the way. It's like, no, there needs to be this change, but you cannot forget the traditions that are part of your being, that are part of yourself. It doesn't have to be an orthodoxy. It is just, this is what I need to do to be a half be to be a happy, healthy me. And so that's going to be very important. And as you show the world the real you, as you embrace individualism, as you move forward in this power, it does, it brings you power and a surrender to the divine. The divine is the, divine is the God's head hidden within us. And there is really a sense of you looking towards that divine light, towards that divine power, and absolutely embracing it. Right? You're surrendering to it. You're saying, you know what? I know that stardust coursed through my veins. I know that Rama said he had the God's head within me.
because that's the one place I would never look. And Brahma is a Hindu god. And so here, you, you're looking at things. It's like, no, I need to look within. And that's why you cannot. And it is hard, emphatic to say cannot, but it is powerful. Cannot get caught up in everybody else's causes and things and forget about yourself because it'll be very, very easy. So this is just, yeah, Spirit is being very emphatic about this for you, Aquarius, because there's beauty on the horizon. And then on the 18th of August, and this full moon is on the 3rd of August, on the 18th of August, the full moon goes into Leo. Confidence is your key to success, and it is. It is your key to success, power, prosperity, abundance, being confident within yourself, knowing where you stand and what you stand for, that is absolutely paramount. And not confusing confidence with arrogance, all right? Or, yeah, no, it's with arrogance here, is what Spirit is showing. That's, that's a recurring message with this Leo new moon, and it is a powerful message with the Leo new moon. Because there is a sense of, as you break out of your comfort zone, you put up barriers, as everybody does. We put up barriers when we feel vulnerable, when we feel, you know, outside of, of what we're used to. And those barriers don't necessarily make us look confident. They can make us look arrogant. They can make us look angry. They can make us look, you know, overly determined, not approachable. And so here, this is a sense of moving forward with confidence and knowing that each step you take, right, Aquarius, each step you take, divinity wants you to take that step. Divinity wants you to move forward. You're in the exact right moment, right, for the time that you are in for the place that you are at and move forward with confidence, knowing that you are being guided towards a greater, more beautiful future. And this opens up beginnings for you. This opens up a portal to a new start, a new, a new dawn. And it says here, a new start is coming. It is. A new start is coming for you. It is leading you forward. And there is a sense here of as you walk through this portal, you're connected here with this portal of the Five of Pentacles and the Four of Swords. And I like that progression, the five into the four into the five. There is a sense of walking into, oh, and even the Three of Pentacles, they all have portals in them. You're walking into a new beginning. You are, are healing from a past that made you feel like you are on the outside of wealth. And you are embracing a prosperity that comes from the power of your heart, from the power of your creativity, from the power of yourself. And so as we move forward, on the 2nd of September, the full moon is in Pisces, and it says balance spirituality with practicality. Make sure you have that balance coming forward, because you can be caught up in one aspect of life or the other, and that's going to be really easy, especially as you're showing the world the real you. you your personality, depending on your temperament, will go to one extreme or the other, Aquarius. Stay balanced. Stay balanced because what she's doing here is she's pouring the water into the ocean. She's letting it flow, f flow free. And that's what you're doing. You're letting your passion, your prosperity, your understanding flow freely from you. And then we have your spirit animals. Now, for August, the spirit animals are the salmon spirit and the cougar spirit. So I do not have either of those spirits in my cards, but I have the nightingale spirit standing in for the salmon spirit and the panther spirit standing in for the cougar spirit. So the salmon spirit here talks about rebirth, moving forward, happiness, eternal life, and femininity. All right? Those are going to be very powerful things for you, and very much on your mind. You are looking to live life to the fullest and to fill your life with things that you love, with people that you love, with moments that you love. All right? If you don't love it, it's kind of like get rid of it. And that's really how you're going to feel. And this is love is all around you, because it is. And as love is all around you, the cougar spirit says, calls you to leadership and to taking charge of your existence. And the panther spirit stands in so nicely with saying, reclaim your power. So as you're looking at the world, as you are moving forward in love, you are reclaiming your power, you are knowing your brilliance, and you are embracing your truth. This moves you then into the spirit animals for September, which are the owl spirit and the brown bear spirit, well, the bear spirit. And the bear spirit is dominion over oneself. It is authority within your life. It is, it is being larger than life and being very protective and committed to those who are, who are weaker than you, but also to those who need you. 
And this is going to be this is going to be a mama bear time. The spirit energy that is around you is like a mama bear, right? So there's a sense of ferocity, there's a sense of dedication, there is a sense of courage around you as you move forward. And the brown bear spirit says, take time out. Take time out to look. Take time out to to truly embrace what is important to you and what you desire. Because then you move into the owl spirit, which is a deep connection to wisdom. It is sharp vision and keen observational skills. I mean, you're really seeing things astoundingly clearly. And sometimes, Aquarius, you're seeing things a lot more clearly than you would want to. Now, this leads to profound insight and intuition, and you're seeing beyond the mask of people, which really connects you to the high priestess, right? So during this time, as you see beyond the mask of people, you're going to see things that you might sit there and be like, but that's not what I want to see. You know, that's not how I envisioned them, but that is how they are. Trust your intuition. Trust your knowledge. The owl spirit says, you see clearly now because you do. And depending on where you are in your journey, you might be seeing too clearly and you might have to say to spirit, to your angels, I cannot handle seeing everything so clearly. Like I need this to kind of be taken down a couple of notches so that it is more comfortable for me. Now, depending on your life path during this time, they might say, okay, cool. You know, we can totally, you know, lessen things. And sometimes your spirit and your angels are like, listen, you have great things to accomplish in this earth and it's forging you through fire. And part of the fire is seeing truth that can be quite overwhelming. So just be prepared there. You know, this isn't, this is a very good time for you. It really is. It is a time where you're really taking things in, embracing, you know, this, this greatness of self, but it's also a time where you're going to be looking at things and being like, okay, well, that was intense. Like that was, that was a little bit more than I bargained for. And it's going to work out. It is. So I don't want you to think like, oh my gosh, Dane, I don't, I don't want this. It is going to work out. It is just going to have this really profound impact on you. And we start off with the three of cups. Now for me, the three of cups is that person who is supposed to be celebrating you. They are, they're supposed to be celebrating you. They're supposed to be, you know, letting you in to this beauty, this understanding. And they just, they just couldn't, they just couldn't celebrate you. They had their own agendas. They were out for themselves and you're sitting there and this could be, this could have been a parent. This could have been a teacher. This could have been a first love. This could have been a best friend or a lover in general, a best friend. You know, this could be anybody, but they were supposed to have your back. They were supposed to be on your side and they just, they just couldn't. And here's the thing. It does not have much to do with you, but everything to do with them. Part of the hurt, part of the pain, yes, it's part of your lesson in this life, but it is also part of theirs. It is. And so there's a thing here, Aquarius, because you are so emotionally connected to people and to situations that you're going to think, what did I do wrong? Like, why did this happen? And it wasn't you. It really was them. And I'm not saying that to be nice and to yeah, to listen to blow. It's like, no, they had a lot to learn, especially if this happened when you were really small. You know, life, life hands us lessons sometimes in the oddest of ways. But this has made you a bit skeptical of trusting people. And what I'm seeing here is that skepticism isn't bad. It, it just isn't. There is a sense of needing to understand and needing to know that you can really, really count on yourself. And there is a group of people around you. They are sometimes the people that we overlook because there are steady eddies. But there are a group of people around you who absolutely want you to succeed, want you to move forward in brilliance and in abundance. And you're embracing that. You need to embrace that. And those who just can't, I mean, it's their loss. It's, it's on them. This then moves you to the Nine of Cups. And the Nine of Cups is brilliance. This is a wish being granted. This is love and joy coming into your life. This is a sense of, of prosperity and harmony. And this can be something that you don't easily see and that others, others show you. You know, others see within you and you might see glimpses of it through them. 
But there are going to be moments when you see this, Aquarius, where this power, this prosperity, this, this truth, it, you cannot help but walk in its light. You cannot help but embrace it. And it absolutely embraces you. And you're going to sit there and think, oh, well, that was a fluke. And, oh, things don't usually happen like that. But no, there, there is power. There is brilliance here. There is true brilliance here. And it is moving you towards what you wish for. So be very mindful what you wish for. You get what you wish for during this time, most definitely. Yeah. And as you move forward, so be very mindful also of what your mind focuses on. Okay, the narrative that you play in your head over and over again. Because there is a sense here of, yeah, there can be, you know, great moments. But there's also a sense, especially since you have it followed by, you have it following the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups can be that you're looking at the heartbreaks, the pains, the disappointments in your life. And it's like, is that your wish to, to perpetuate that? And it's like, no, it's not. Your wish is to walk in greatness. Your wish is to have beauty being a part of your very existence. And that's what you need to embrace. And know that you're worthy of it. Absolutely, positively worthy of it. Because as you open yourself up to this power, and it does not mean that everything falls into alignment right away. It takes time. And even when you're doing your very best, you'll have moments where life just kind of hits you. You'll sit there and be like, what the heck is this? And it's, and it's living. It is simply living. And it's hard and it's uncomfortable. And one of my favorite quotes about life that always makes me kind of chuckle darkly is that living is the hardest thing you'll ever do. After all, it kills you. And that's what Catherine Hepburn said. And it's truth. And if you can have somebody who seemed to have everything kind of just like fall at her feet, like her say that, then it is most definitely true for the rest of us. And then we have the three of wands. The three of wands is your ship coming in. The three of wands is your passion. It is your creation. It is a beginning of a voyage, a beginning of a journey. It is, you know, sitting there and, and seeing things starting to come together and wondering, oh my gosh, will it be like this? You know, will I, will I get to move forward like that? Like, how? Why? What is coming? There's an excitement. I just feel, oh, wow, I feel this exhilaration to you. It gives me, it gives me chills. It's like it takes your breath away. And as, as it moves forward, as you're seeing this, you need to rest. And I know that's going to be almost the exact opposite that you want to do. It's kind of like, I need to, to go for it. But emotionally, personally, you need to sit there and have this connection with your mind and with yourself inwardly and say, yeah, okay, I have the three of wands coming in. I want to burn the candle at both ends. I want to go and go and go until I just win and win and win and never stop. But what will happen is you'll burn out. What will happen is the doubts and the fears because you're feeling more run down and you know, tired and upset and cranky. And so the doubts and the fears, they'll come up further. They'll be, they'll be, they'll be more. And then what you need to do with the four of swords is relax. You need to look at everything that you've accomplished because there is also this urgency of like, if I don't strike right now, it'll never be. And that's fair, you know, but you need to give yourself time. You need to rest. You need to take things in. You need to look at your passion, your power, your understanding. And as you do so, you claim your truth. You also look at all the battles that you have been through because the doubt from the Three of Cups will come in and be like, oh, can I do this? Can I move forward this way? Am I, you know, am I ready? And the fact of the matter is you are. There is a beauty. There is a brilliance to you. Let yourself rest. Let yourself sleep at night. Right? That's going to be very important. That is very important for your overall health. Let yourself rest. Let yourself be calm and centered. And look at everything that you have done and give yourself the pat on the back that you deserve. This then leads you to the three of pentacles. Hard work and dedication. And it's you working hard. It's you understanding things. And this is you embracing your heart. So in your personal arena, you're looking at the hardships and the pains and now here with your, with your emotional arena, you're looking at the prosperity. You're looking at the way to build things, the way to connect things, the way to have things move forward. And as you take in this knowledge, right, and as you are really looking at the way that you want to plant the seeds, the seeds of abundance, the seeds of prosperity, the way that you are honing, crafting, and, and creating, right, you're a student. 
And this links you to the Aquarius full moon even more than you are already linked. and You are intertwined with it quite beautifully. And during this time, Aquarius, you are a student. You are a student of your mind. You are a student of what you desire. You are a student of where you need to be. You're cutting through doubts and fears. You're asking questions. You're getting super curious about things. You're looking at truth. You're looking at what you desire. And you're saying, all right, I got this. I get this. And it is a part of me. There's also a sense here of this being an excellent moon for learning. Okay, this being an excellent moon. If you just even sat in meditation, Aquarius, during this moon, you know, just for a half an hour, right? You could do five minutes if you can't do a half an hour. But if you could sit there for a half an hour or, or better, that's going to be really beneficial. And what will happen is you'll start to think and you'll just say to your angels, to your spirit guides, to divinity, you know, God, source, spirit, however you say it, however you see it, you know, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to learn? What am I being guided towards during this time? And it touches you. It touches your heart, your soul, yourself. It connects you. And you're going to see that inspiration comes. Right? Inspiration comes. And it really does move you in a powerful direction, in a profound direction. And it moves you to being the emperor. Okay? It's like from being the student, from taking things in, you get these messages because pages are also messenger cards. You get these messages from divinity and it moves you to the emperor. The emperor is, of course, an Aries energy, March 21st to April 19th. This is, this is being powerful. This is being dedicated. This is as your ships come in, you are taking your power. You are knowing your worth. You are moving forward in absolute dedication to self. And you're saying, this is what I need. You are also embodying the energy of all the kings. So you have a highly powerful kingly energy to you. Because as you look at this, this is a sense of I am the supreme ruler. I am the supreme understander of what needs to be done within my life, of the power that I need to move me forward and the passion that I have to get there. And as you embrace this understanding, you know your truth. And you look at your throne and you say, I deserve to sit here. I have earned this. And I always, see, I always see the emperor so beautifully linked to David in the Old Testament, in the Torah. And with King David, you know, he was a flawed character. He was. He wasn't perfect, but he strived to be the best him that he could be. He repented when he, he went wrong and he saw how it influenced his life. And that's what you're going to see here. You're going to see this power of it's not being perfect. It is not even, you know, being guided towards perfection. It is saying, I know I'm imperfect. I know that I am profoundly human, but I am being guided by my angels and my spirit guides. So you are being guided by perfection, but you're not, there's going to be, and spirit's like, make this clear, there's going to be a big difference between being guided by perfection and wanting that perfection to come into your life. Because the thing with perfection is it's the best that you can do at that moment. So if you gave your all, that's perfect. You might look at it, look back at it in five seconds. It's just showing me quiches falling down. It's like, and be like, man, I wish that turned out better. But it is going to be a powerful time for you. And there's a powerful truth that you are embracing. There's also a fatherly like energy around your heart, protecting you, guiding you, moving you forward. And that's going to be really beautiful. It leads you with this power, with this understanding, with this dedication. You, we have right here a repeat of the number four. And the repeat of the number four shows that you are, are committed to your body, mind, and spirit. You need to take care of yourself. Your home, your, your, your body is very important to you with the repeat of the number four. And it leads you to the magician. The magician is, is your magic. The magician is turning lead into gold, right? Alchemy. And as you're looking at what you are conjuring, you're conjuring your destiny and your future. And the turning lead into gold is not turning, you know, physical lead into gold. It is taking you, as a human being, flaws and all, and saying, I am worthy of being gold. I am worthy of being priceless and cherished. I'm working towards that realization in your life and having that confidence to guide you there, to embrace the truth, to move you in this power. The magician is you conjuring and creating your future, as we do every single day with every single choice that we make. 
And this is you being much more aware of things. Right? You already have the energy of the high priestess around you because of, of the owl of the September, yeah, of September, of the September spirit animals. So you have that energy coming in very strongly around the 18th, around the new moon, because that's going to be a pull for you. And this coming together, this inward understanding, this seeing more clearly and having this confidence within yourself is really going to be a powerful combination for you. You have the skills as above, so below. As you believe it, so it becomes. Embrace that truth. Hold your hands out to receive. In the Rider Waite Smith deck, it is the magician, and he has one hand up and one hand down. One to reach towards the heavens, the other to ground him, to center him. And if you could do that pose, you know, just reach, I believe it is his left hand up. I'm not entirely sure. You can look up the cards to see. And then put your right hand down. That's letting in spiritual blessings. And it's grounding you. If you put your right hand up and then your left hand down, it's asking for earthly blessings. And then it's grounding you. I would do, I would do both. I'm seeing it very powerful for you for the left hand up for your left hand being up. That's going to have a very strong impact. For some reason, this is a very emotional, emotionally connecting, emotionally powerful time for you because you are moving towards showing the world the real you and doing so with confidence and doing so with the balance of your spiritual and practical self. And that is opening yourself up in a way that most people never will. It is embracing a level of vulnerability that is, is profound. And it moves you then, then to the Six of Swords. In the public arena, you are moving forward. You're taking your knowledge and your understanding, and you're like, okay, it's time to go after what I need, what I desire, what I want within my life. You know, it's time to go after me. And as you do this, you become more confident. You become more centered. You look at things much more openly and honestly. Is it always a journey that you want to do? No. Is it a journey that you need to do and you are rejoicing in? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. Even though you may be scared along the way, it is powerful and it is brilliant. It then moves you, and I like the countdown from the six to the five. It moves you to the five of pentacles. Because as you're moving forward and you're pushing out of your comfort zone, that's what the six of pentacles does. As you push out of your comfort zone, you embrace prosperity, but you have been on the outside of prosperity before. And this isn't, you know, this isn't anything to be ashamed of. Every single person in their life has had a moment when they have been on the outside of prosperity. And for some of us, I mean, raise my hand, me most definitely included, it's been longer than a moment. And you look at things and it's like, it'll never change. But you have that portal. You have that portal of beginnings. And we see it here with the prosperity shining through the windows, being put in to the stained glass. Almost think of this as stained glass being put in, illuminating your learning, illuminating your prosperity. It brings you to new beginnings because this prosperity here, this light, okay, this passion is affecting how you see things. And as it affects how you see things, right, with the three of pentacles, the blessings come. This portal here showing you resting, right? And then the outside world, also in slumber, slumber is showing love around you. Yes, most definitely, right? But it is also showing that there is a gateway. There is a connection between what you have been through and, and the world. And you are connected to it. And also, when you have looked at everything that you have done and everything that you have been through, and you walk through into your power, you embrace the world in a whole new way, in an amazing way. And in the Five of Pentacles, feeling on the outside of wealth, feeling as if you can't cross through that th threshold, that is a feeling that most definitely needs to be addressed. Because whenever we sit there and we think, oh, wealth is for everybody else, but it's not for us. It's kind of like praise is for other people. But if you were raised with the saying, self-praise stinks, and my grandma used to say that all the time. It's like, no, you be humble, you be kind, you know, and self-praise stinks. Then who's going to raise you up? And my grandma was beyond magnificent. But here, here it is okay. It is okay to raise yourself up. It's okay to be confident. Arrogant is what she was warning about. Arrogant is what spirit is warning about. Oh my gosh, that connection just kind of took my breath away for a moment. It got me really excited. So it's not 
It's not being confident within yourself. It's not saying, I deserve to walk into wealth. It's saying, I will not be arrogant and obnoxious. And people roll their eyes when I come by. No. And I am not not worthy of love and of prosperity and of bounty and of brilliance and of things worth their weight in gold. I am turning into that gold and I am worth it. And that's where you start to change the narrative of not being worthy to being more than worthy and embracing that truth as a part of your living truth. That is your mantra. If you make that your mantra for this time, I am worthy of of greatness. I am worthy of prosperity. I am worthy of bounty. You know, take whichever one feels right for you. I am enough to conquer my dreams. I am enough to move forward in my glory. I am enough to be what I want to be. Because there's going to be nobody who's going to sit there and say, well, I'll help you. I'll walk you through it. You know, I will make sure that, you know, you succeed. It's, it's the power within us. And the hardships and the pains and the disappointments, yes, they come. But as you move forward in your truth and in your blessing, you see your power so much more. You see and understand you so, so greatly that you're saying, you know what, no more. No more of the being the porpa. No more of being on the outside of wealth. I open my doors to wealth and I say, come in. Come in because I deserve you. As a child of divinity, as a person with stardust through my veins, as part of this universe, I deserve prosperity. And then it's also working your tukas off to get there. You know, being dedicated and being disciplined. And that comes forward. So that's why you don't want to throw the schedule out the window. Because you are moving towards happiness. You're moving towards blessings and prosperity and brilliance and, and glory and beauty. And it comes through discipline and dedication, yes. But this light shines on you and it's like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, yes. It radiates through you. It warms you. It's like laying out in the sun and just your skin being so warm and so beautifully... so beautifully soothed, healed. That's what I'm seeing here. There's a warmth that washes over you. And that's spirit telling you, you're on the right path. You're doing good. You know, you're doing really, really well. And this happiness comes in. And it's in the public arena, so people see it. And people also start to see this shift, and they're like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm used, to Aquarius, to you, you know, sitting there and being like, oh, no, I, I couldn't, or oh, no, you know, good things don't happen, you know, here. And then all of a sudden, like, wham, here comes the blessings, here comes the power, here comes the beauty. And people are going to be like, well, what gives you the right? And if they knew how hard you worked for it, well, they wouldn't care, actually. They really wouldn't. They'd be like, well, I've worked hard. You know, I've been disciplined, I've been dedicated, you know, why not me? And the fact that they ask that question, it's why it's not them. So don't let others steal your glory, steal your sunlight, because you have here, you know, this passion, this power of you coming through as, as you start to see your ships coming in, as you start to see ideas coming together. And what is the moon but the reflection of the sun's light? So here, you have that sun shining on you and the moon which calls to your very being has that same intensity to it well has that same passion to it just a bit soothing more soothing yeah more centering more stabilizing and it moves you to the queen of cups this is love this is joy this is success this is beauty this is prosperity this is what your heart desires and as the queen of cups comes in you sit there and you say this is what i love this is who i am this is what i need and there's a brilliance to you. There's an absolute brilliance to you that takes your breath away. And as you see this, you are, are calmed. You are centered. Right? This is you embracing love and anointed by love. Having your heart open. You're also very connected here to a, air, a water sign energy. Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. And it's the love coming in. It is the love healing you. It is washing through your body. It is centering you. It is moving you forward. And then we have the Six of Wands and the Seven of Wands. And these are your bonus cards. And they actually came out like this. And I moved it this way because I like that progression. But the countdown is also very, very nice. And the Seven of Wands is, is saying, what battles do I fight? 
You know, as you are moving forward and as you are embracing your truth, you're going to feel like I have to defend myself against everyone. That's also going to be the rebellious nature of this moon. It's kind of like I have to have it so that you see. You see things clearly of like why I'm moving forward this way and what I'm desiring to create. And with the seven of wands, it's like, okay, don't step on every stone or else you'll never get to the other side. There are just some people, they will never agree with you. Absolutely never agree. And that's because either they don't want to, they like disagreeing, or they just don't see things the same way you do. Stay in your truth. Follow that wisdom. That wisdom, that high priestess energy, I just see it as really connecting with you, really pulling you in. And there's an insight, there's an intuition to you that's even coming in during this Aquarius moon, even though this is for, you know, September, this is for, you know, the moon in Pisces, this energy is around you. And you're like, no more, no more lies, no more doubts, no more fears. I stand in my truth. I'm not going to be a pushover. But you're also not going to engage because that's just going to be exhausting. And where, when are you going to be able to have the beauty of your life? If you're always engaging with other people's, you know, spirit is saying stupidity. Live in your truth. Move forward in your truth. And it moves you to the Six of Wands. It moves you to a celebration of yourself. It moves you to a rejoicing of your abilities. And that, that is powerful. That is powerful. That is happiness. That is, that is, that is brilliance. It really is. Is that better? Yeah. Now, that is a brilliance that you are absolutely embracing. And remember to rejoice in you. Remember to celebrate you. To sit there and say, good job, Aquarius. Like, well done. Because that boosts you up. Because you're going to be so quick to point out, oh, wow, I did that wrong and I did that wrong. Don't do that to yourself. Really don't. It would be, it'd be very detrimental to the way you move forward in success. Let's see the people who are going to affect you during this time. Who are the people who are going to affect Aquarius during the August 2020 full moon? Who are the people who are going to affect Aquarius during the August 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. This one. And this one. Okay. So in the personal arena, is the Princess of Cups, Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. In your heart's arena, it is the Queen of Swords. It's you. It's you, it's other air sign energies, Gemini, Libras, Aquariuses, it can be other Aquariuses. And then in the public arena, it is the Prince of Wands. This is a fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, you have a strong Aries presence here at your heart, so I wouldn't be surprised if that Aries also moved forward into the public arena. But this could also be a father figure, this could be a... I'm seeing a father figure or a husband here. And, that, and that's coming through rather clearly. It could be, it could be, you know, it could be any partner. It could be. But there's something here with a very kind of father figure. It just keeps on coming up very, very clearly. All right? We have the Princess of Cups. The Princess of Cups is a person who seeks, who has a wonderment to them, who has this wide-eyed, wide-eyedness. I just see, like here, she's taking it in. She's taking in her blessings. She's laying out her wishes. You know, she could be also be anointing the, the water, you know, helping with its, its energy. It's, yeah, the blessings that are coming into her as she, as she drinks, when she drinks. But I see when she opens her eyes, her eyes will be wide and just filled with this, with this kindness that you see. And with this person, you see their kindness in their eyes. And I, I would say that this person has big eyes, okay, this, or striking eyes. It's going to be one of the things you notice about them, or, or glasses, or something like that, where you're just, you're, one of the first thing you notice is, is their eyes, or around their eyes. But this person loves. This person loves deeply, and this person has this energy of emotion just flowing through her. And that's, that's very powerful. That's something that you connect with really rather beautifully. And then the Queen of Swords with the, over your heart. Now this is you, yes, most definitely. But this is also 
Oh, and I just got chills again. My goodness. This is also somebody who, like, listens to the wind. And I know it sounds rather like, you know, <laughs> Disney's Pocahontas. But this is somebody... And, and there's, there's a truth to that. There is. There is, like, this beauty. There's this understanding that comes to you, that comes to the person here, this air sign energy, this Gemini, this Libra, this, this Aquarius, that is, that is guided by the wind, that is guided by, by fate, that is guided by something greater. And you're going to have that aspect about them. But first, when you first see this person, you're going to think, wow, a bit arrogant, you know? Because when I first looked at the Queen of Swords, I thought, oh, man, you know, I, I didn't like the way she was depicted at all. Now I love it. I thought she was arrogant. I thought she was snotty, you know? And I thought, oh, that's not nice. I don't like that for my air sign energies. But looking at her one day when I was doing the readings, I was blown away, absolutely blown away. This is the wind. This is the wind speaking to her. And this is an air sign energy. So the wind is everything. The, the voice is everything. The, the sound is everything. Okay, the energy is everything. You can feel it. It's, it's carried. And so here, this is going to be a person with that energy, with that understanding, with that brilliance. And that person very well can be you, Aquarius. This is a person who, unlike the queen of, the princess of cups, this is a person who has a maturity to them. Now this could be an a mature person, and this is a young person. But there is, there is a, a sense here. There's a wonderment here. And there is a reality here. This is like, this is what I know. This is what I see. This is what is. It's kind of like the wisdom of age coming forward. And it's like, wow. And it can also be just a really old soul. Just a really old soul. Somebody who sits there and is like, they just know. And you're like, oh my goodness. I don't know how you know. I don't know how this comes in, but you do. And this here, this could be a mature person who just has this vivaciousness to them, has this vitality to them that is exquisite. And then it moves you to the Prince of Wands. This is a fire sign energy in Aries, a Leo, a Sagittarius. Moving forward, dedicated, determined. You know, looking at what is needed, what is wanted, and saying, yeah, I'm, I'm charging forward. I'm going after it. I will not be held back. And this is a person who is a go-getter. This is a person who, you know, moves rather quickly, not as quickly as the Knight of Swords, but the second quickest knight is the Knight of Wands. And so there's a passion, there's an intuition. This person has tremendous intuition. That could make them stumble a little bit because they don't know how to trust it yet. Okay, so just be mindful of that because this is also can be very youthful energy. But this is a determination, a passion, a power. Yeah. And then let's see. Oh, I love it. The Queen of Swords went right over Aquarius. So it's definitely, it's definitely a strong aspect of you within being the Queen of Swords during this time. It's just, it's brilliant. It really is brilliant. It's like, I am this queen and I love how she's dressed in purples and blues. And those dyes were so hard to make, you know, back until relatively recently. They were only used by royalty. And the people who made those dyes, they lived on like the outskirts of town because they smelled so bad. Oh my gosh. They smelled so bad to make. And yet they were so amazing to be able to wear. I think that's, I think there's also a, uh, something in there about that. You know, Spirit is saying, yeah, there's a reason for that where it's like sometimes things that are the hardest things to go, to, go through would leave like the worst smell. They make the best people. It's kind of like putting down manure for the roses. And it's having, or, or for your garden, it's having that lusciousness come out. But you have to go through, you know, the manure first, that smell. So let's see what Luna has to say for herself, what the moon has to say for herself during this time. How will Aquarius be affected by the August 2020 full moon? How will Aquarius be affected by the August 2020 full moon? How will Aquarius be affected by the August 2020 full moon? Angels, ooh. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Ooh, okay. That's interesting. Huh. 
And how will Aquarius be affected by the August 2020 full moon? How will Aquarius be affected by the August 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. So in the personal arena, we have growth, we have path, and we have discernment. I like that. Growth on the path to discernment, to being a little bit more picky, you know, about things within your life, about the energy that you let you let in, the the yeah, the power that is around you, the way that you 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 channel it is is really quite brilliant. Purity. Nourishing, nourishment, and abundance. The purity of your intentions, of the way that you follow your path, nourishes your abundance. And it leads you to a new romantic cycle, a new cycle of love within your life. Amplified by meditation and contemplation. Very strong Pisces energy here, because this is the Pisces new moon, and we have the Pisces full moon in September. And then, as you meditate and contemplate, you see how it is time to take action. So you move forward in growth. Growth as an individual, growth within the, the power of yourself, growth within, yeah, the power of you. Because remember, you're represented by the star card in the major, major arcana, and that's the wish card in the major arcana. And we have the wish card here with the nine of cups. So this is like growth in what you're wishing for and what you desire within your life, the way other people's negativity, you know, hurtful words have impact. And it's saying, no, I move forward in my power. And as I move forward in growth, I, I see my path. And again, it's going through a portal to new beginnings, to new power, to new understanding. And as you see this path, and as you embrace this path of growth, power, perseverance, and greatness, you are being very discerning. You know, you have tremendous discernment on the energy that you're letting in, on the people that you're letting affect you, the, the power that you are really tapping into, into your life is, is discerning. It's like, no, this isn't just kind of like a junk heap or a garbage pile. You know, I am looking at the best of what I want and I'm saying I deserve it. I absolutely deserve it. And that's what discernment means. It means it's not like, you know, just any old thing can do. Yeah, because I'm seeing like trash off the streets, like any old thing can do. It's like, no. It's like, be discerning. Even though you are so terribly caring, you open up your heart tremendously. And you're going to think, oh, you don't have to be discerning. But it drains you. It will drain you if you aren't more, yeah, more cautious, more, more discerning on, on who, on who you let in, on the energy that you let in. Right? Be very mindful during this time. I mean, really seriously, Aquarius, be astoundingly mindful of, of the energy that you let in and what you're focusing on emotionally, personally, during this time. Because it'll have a tremendous effect on you. And you want to grow your power, not diminish it. Purity of intention. It's like, you know, white as driven snow. Right? Just, and you know when it snows. Well, and if you don't, when it snows, there's this silence to things. There's this beauty to things. And that's what I see coming in. It's like after a snowstorm, when you look out the window or when you go outside, and the only thing that you can hear is the birds and their songs kind of echo off the snow, bringing a brilliance, bringing a glory to them and a brilliance and a glory to you, a purity of intention, a camaraderie and a calming desire of moving forward. This nourishes you, brings you the nourishment that you need, the bounty that you hold your arms open to. Abundance comes because of this. It's embracing abundance, knowing that you're worthy of abundance and manifesting that abundance as you see the magic within you, as you see the God's head within you. This brings you to a new romantic cycle. I mean, it does. It brings love and joy and prosperity into your life. A new romantic cycle comes. A new brilliance comes. 
And it's just falling in love with life. Falling in love with yourself. And as that moves you forward, meditation and contemplation. Meditation and contemplation centers and ignites you. It's time to take action. It's time to take hold of what you want and move forward in the power that you have. It's the power of your heart. It's the brilliance of your mind. It's the way your heart and your mind communicate with each other and say, I'm not going to be fully emotion because that's chaotic in one direction. I'm not going to be fully logic because that's chaotic in another direction. One is too feeling too much and the other is too separate, too cold. I need that middle ground. And as you take action with that middle ground being known, with this stubborn brilliance of your existence coming forward, you are ignited in power. And let's see your subconscious message for this time. We have the Princess of Pentacles, Earth Sign Energy Taurus Virgo Capricorn. This is a studying of, of prosperity. This is a looking at bounty. This is being deeply involved with the beauty of something, with the craftsmanship, with the way it was made, the way it holds up. This could be a person who really looks at quality of things, not quantity. And it is, it is stunning. It is. There's also an innocence, a beauty to it, a, an acceptance and a rejoicing, kind of like new eyes coming in and seeing something. And then subconscious message from Luna starts out with hunger. You're hungry for this change, for this brilliance, for this, this power that is now a part of you. You're hungry for it. And it moves you then to the message again from Luna to extrapolate on that hunger. His emotions are running high. You know, you have the super moon here. Emotions run high because you're hungry for this change, for this brilliance, for this pity. And as you look at what it is that you want, what it is that you desire, the subconscious message for this whole entire reading is the Knight of Swords. This is you. The fastest moving of the knights. Determination, dedication, cutting through doubts and fears, going after something and going after it forcefully and brilliantly. You know what you want within your life and you are amazed by it. You just are. And usually I say with the, with the Knight of Swords, like, slow down, think things through. But you have been thinking this, things through. You have been slowing down. Now is the time to act. It's like strike away while the iron's hot. Move forward. Go after what it is that you want. Make sure it's logical. Make sure it's sensible. All right, because you can ge be caught up in the emotions of things. So don't just kind of like go too quickly forward. But as you take everything in, you see this, it gives a glint to your eyes, a passion, a brilliance to you. Embrace it as it embraces you. All right, Aquarius, let's end this reading with a bit of a meditation. But I also want to say, I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. And I love you all, and stay safe. And now let's end with a clearing of any negative energy, a raising of our energy vibration, and a centering of ourselves so that we can walk forward more powerful, more brilliant, and more connected with the universe than before. Take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you, 